Hey everyone, my name is Kyle and on today's episode, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how I've been removing this ugly popcorn ceiling from my new house. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna say is this video is for popcorn ceilings that do not contain asbestos. Now, if your popcorn ceiling does contain asbestos, that calls for a whole nother uh, protocol to be done to make sure that you contain all those asbestos fibers um, when you start scraping it because you are going to disturb it and there's stuff's going to be in the air. So I, I highly recommend you hire a professional and if you do try this yourself, make sure you do your research and wear a proper mask, a respirator uh, to protect yourself because inhaling asbestos fibers is definitely not good for your lungs and prolonged exposure to those fibers can actually lead to cancer. So make sure you do your research. Now, how do you know if you have asbestos in your popcorn ceiling? Well, I ordered a test kit on Amazon and you just, you know, fill out the paperwork, put your little sample in the bag that they provide, send it in. And I think ours took about four days to get back the results and ours came back, um, uh, no asbestos. And I, I actually email you the results, so. All right, so step number one, you're gonna wanna cover up your floor or furniture if you have it. So my house, is gonna get completely redone. We're getting new floors, we're gonna be painting, repainting everything. So I'm not really too concerned if we get, you know, the popcorn ceiling on some stuff. I'm basically putting the plastic down to, to use it as kind of a containment. I basically it makes it easier to remove. Once it falls on this, I can just pick up the plastic and just kind of pull everything into the center to, you know, scoop it up and put it in the garbage bag. Or I can actually roll the popcorn ceiling up into the plastic and just grab the whole bundle of plastic and take it out. But this stuff is extremely messy and I can show you how much of a mess it makes. So this is the stairway and I scraped the ceiling yesterday above the stairs and it, uh, man, it makes a big mess, <laughs> as you can see. Now, if you have furniture in your house, you're definitely gonna wanna cover everything extremely good. Take your time and do a good job on the prep because you know if you start you know walking on this plastic and it starts coming up you're gonna get popcorn particles everywhere so do a good job on the prep work all right let's talk about step number two all right so the second step is you're gonna want to wet the ceiling to soften the popcorn material so what do you what do I use to do that I use an airless paint sprayer you can use any airless paint sprayer. And then instead of paint, I just put water in the bucket and spray it on the ceiling. There's a the paint sprayer. Now, if you don't have a paint sprayer, you can also use one of those uh, pump sprayers that you can get at Home Depot for pretty cheap. They're probably like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. And you can also use that um, to do it. But I recommend using that paint sprayer, it makes it a lot easier to uh, get the ceiling wet. Now, depending on your walls, how good they're painted, you need to be careful on the corners when you're wetting the ceiling, because if you get this too wet in the corner, you, run, you can run the risk of damaging the texture on this wall. I don't wanna ruin these walls. So I highly recommend you be careful with that. If you're really worried about wrecking them, I, I maybe recommend putting some plastic up along the top just to kind of protect the walls or you can actually get a like a thin board i've got one in this room i'll show you what i did um you can take a board like this it's a thin um, piece of plywood and while you're getting wet you can stick it up in the corner and spray the water to kind of protect that wall surface a little bit of water um, won't hurt anything but uh, you know it all depends on your house and how it's uh, been painted and, um, and how good the paint is so definitely be careful with that um, I haven't had any problems with the the walls uh, peeling off they've actually been pretty durable and uh, so I'm not covering mine all right so I'm gonna start spraying this ceiling all right so you're probably wondering how many coats of water do you put on the ceiling? Now that depends on how much it's been painted. So the more it's been painted, the more coats of water you're gonna to wanna to put. So my house, I've been getting away with two coats. One of the rooms did take three coats of water. So I just basically spray it on 
kind of let it soak in a little bit in a few minutes, then I'll spray it again with water. So let's start spraying. So here's how the water went. I, I started off with two coats and I did a little test sample and it still wasn't scraping easily. So I went ahead and sprayed two more. So it's a total of four coats of water. I used about six gallons of water. It's quite a bit of water. I sprayed on this ceiling and then the, the hallway kind of wraps around another maybe six feet, four feet wide. And it is ready to scrape. So. What I've got here, this is my scraping tool. It's just a 12 inch uh, sheetrock knife, uh, duct taped to a uh, one inch PVC pipe. Now you can use any kind of painter's pole, uh, any kind of pole that you can find will work. This is all I had in my truck when I started this and I was too lazy to drive to my other house to get the uh, proper painting pole. Um, yeah, use a little duct tape and get yourself a scraper. And this is what I've been using for the entire house. It's been working out great. Um, now you want to make sure your scraper kind of has a slight curve in it so that when you're pushing it against the ceiling you don't gouge these corners into the uh, ceiling. You don't, want, you don't want to curve the other way to where the corners are bent up. That would just cut into the sheetrock and you definitely don't want to do that. That would be more work for you later. So yeah, make sure they're curved slightly down and uh, you want a real thin knife so it can flex with the contour of the ceiling. So I'm gonna start scraping this to show you guys how easy this goes. I'm gonna make sure the camera's rolling. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna push it right here and just go all the way down to the other side. Let's see if we can get it started. Okay, here we go. Pretty simple. It's coming off pretty good. It's a little tough right here on the corner where it meets the other sheet rock. Too bad retexturing wasn't as easy. Oh, this is coming off great. wearing a mask because this stuff is soaking wet and there's not a lot of dust coming off of it. Now, probably should wear a mask. I recommend you do it, but I'm taking my chances here. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't even see any dust coming off of it. So that's why I'm not wearing a mask. All right, so when you're doing the corners, be very careful not to damage the paper. So if you're pushing the popcorn ceiling towards the wall, when you get to the end, just be very care careful because you can damage the little uh, paper strip that they put in um, when they were doing the sheetrock. Best thing to do would probably be to go along the edge and scrape. Just like that. That way you don't damage the paper edge, and then have to do more uh, patchwork later. All right, so I'm gonna continue to scrape. I'll do a little time lapse for you.
so here is the ceiling after scraping. Now this took me about 20 minutes to scrape. It would have been a lot quicker if I wasn't filming this process. If I would have maybe taken like, if I would have taken like 10 minutes. Uh, but I had to do some camera angles for you guys. <laughs> Here's the hallway that I scraped. Yeah, everything came off great. Uh, I had a couple spots that caught. I think this was already kind of damaged from before. It's kind of soft spot there. Uh, but the rest of it, I didn't gouge any of the paper on the main ceiling. I did have a couple spots where the paint uh, peeled off a little bit. So I'm gonna let this dry uh, before I do anything else and then I'll come back and touch that up. So this episode, I'm not gonna show you how I retexture the ceiling. That'll be for another episode. It'll probably be my next video after this that comes out. And I will show you guys step-by-step step on how to do that. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be matching this uh, knockdown texture that's in the kitchen. I'll give you a shot of the kitchen. It's too bad they didn't do this throughout the whole house. That would have saved me a lot of effort. And I'll, I'll blend this all in and you won't even be able to tell that uh, it was a different texture. All right, so that's the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I really hope it helped you out uh, because sometimes these projects can seem really daunting, but in fact, they're actually pretty easy. So if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you can be notified when I post my latest how-to videos. And please share these with your family and friends. And I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode. And I got some work to do. Now I gotta clean up this mess. Does not sound like fun. Ha, ha, ha.